Shares of the medical provider Centene up over 4% on its annual investor day. The company raised its 2024 adjusted profit forecast and authorized an additional $4 billion to the $1.2 billion remaining in its previous stock buyback program. Still, shares are down about 6% this year, as you can see on that chart. For more here, let's head over to the New York Stock Exchange, where CNBC's Bertha Coombs stands by with Centene CEO Sarah London. Bertha. Thanks very much, Tyler and Sarah. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, one of the big issues that people have been looking at this year, you're the nation's largest Medicaid insurer, has been states dropping people off of the Medicaid rolls now that the uh, pandemic public emergency has ended. What are you seeing and what are you seeing with regard to those people being able to gain coverage on exchanges? Yeah, this has obviously been a huge focus for us for over a year as we prepared for the process that formally kicked off on April 1st. Our, our priority has really been working closely with our state partners because it is a massive undertaking for them and leaning in uh, to figure out how we can help them ensure coverage continuity. And so we are seeing um, some of those administrative disenrolls. roles. We're seeing roughly 25 percent of members who come back onto the rolls um, because of procedural drop offs. So we've been trying to help actually make that process more efficient. And then we have been able to also help members move over into marketplace products in order to preserve that coverage continuity. And so we're seeing that as an industry. We're seeing that from Centene's perspective, and we think that that ultimately is going to drive better health outcomes because those members have consistent access to care. One of the things you told investors today was that you see yourself as a platform of growth when it comes to government-sponsored health care. You already stand high on the hill when it comes to Medicaid, high on the hill when it comes to the exchanges. You have a million uh, members and you're really trying to climb that hill when it comes to Medicare. What are you looking at next year, particularly since you had gotten lower scores from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid going into 2024? Yeah, so as we said, we believe that the three pillars of Medicaid, Marketplace, and Medicare are core to our platform. We think they are all three really um, exciting growth opportunities. And our focus in Medicare has actually been uh, pivoting to a, a historic focus on serving that low-income, complex senior population that's consistent with the sociodemographic population we serve in our other two lines of business, which allows us to leverage the local core capabilities that we have there into serving this more fragile, complex, dual-eligible population. I don't notice you, though, advertising like some of your larger competitors as much. Well, so reaching those populations is a little bit different. We're definitely advertising. We're finding the right channels to meet those members. Um, those members also typically purchase through brokers, um, actually through mail order. There are different ways to reach the dual eligible members. So we've been really refining our distribution strategy against that target population. And the big switch you're making next year involves your pharmacy benefit contract. Mm -hmm. You have switched from CVS Caremark to Cigna's Evernorth, formerly Express Scripts. How is that going and what are you going to gain from that switch? Yeah, well, we were really happy to be able to take more than $40 billion of pharmacy spend out into the market um, in a competitive process. Obviously, chose ESI. We've been working on that implementation all year. We've hit all the milestones. We actually had an early go-live of one of our states in October that went really smoothly. So we're excited for that 1-1 kind of big bang that we have coming up. And for us, some of it was a fundamentally different cost structure that we could acquire um, to the benefit of our customers, our state customers and obviously our, our federal partners, but also the level of transparency that we know that our customers demand and seeing through contracts and understanding what the pricing strategies are, that's been an important thing for us because of the role we play in government-sponsored health care. And then innovation. Um, and so those were part of the criteria that we evaluated. And CVS has been a great partner to us during the transition, and we're excited to move forward with the assessment.